Hi, International Grandmaster Ron W. Henley here with www.onlinechesslessons.net. We continue our coverage of the 2012 World Chess Olympiad being played in uh, <clears throat> Istanbul, Turkey with a huge upset. In the match between Qatar and Ukraine, uh, GM Al Mariaki uh, <clears throat> manages to score against Grandmaster Alexander Ivanchuk. Let's take a look. Well, to start with, Ivanchuk has played an absolute fantastic strategical masterpiece up to this point. He's got a super solid knight on d5, the pawns on c3, a3 are under attack, and note that every single white pawn is on the color of his bishop. That's the classic definition of, quote, a bad bishop. However, it is white to play, and white realizes that Quiet play with moves like bishop b2 or queen f3 are just going to lead to him being the victim of a long-term squeeze. Therefore, he seizes the moment and plays f5. Uh, an excellent practical decision. This increases the scope, allows the white queen to swing over, also finally gives this bishop a little bit of air. Of course, He's hoping to expose the, the black king, which is pretty much white's only chance in this ballgame. In the game, Ivanchuk correctly takes with the e-pawn. Note that g takes f5 would almost immediately reward white for his ambitious play. After, for example, queen h4, the, the queen swings over to the b-file. And then probably black needs to play b5 in order to cover the d8 square. Notice that after queen h4, white has various nasties like rook h2, or maybe g6, threatening queen d8, check. Could be a little dicey for the black king. Therefore, b5, and black can maintain the balance, but white's doing okay. In the game, after e takes f5, of course the queen has to move, and now he fires over to the h-file. Note that queen e1 threatens e6, looks strong, but after knight c7, then the e6 idea is clamped, and on g4, fg4, queen h4, the knight can swing to e6, and now rook h2 can very nicely be met by knight to f8. And white's a long way here from uh, being able to do anything. So going back to the game after e takes f5, white immediately swings over to the h-file, and here Ivanchuk plays queen b5. And this is really a surprising defensive error from a super GM who is ranked in the top 10 or 15 for well over 20 years. Uh, <clears throat> I can understand why he would want to play here, because obviously the queen is able to come back to d7, c6, e8, defend the king side, and he is also tempted by the possibility of queen to b1 penetrating uh, the white position. However, in retrospect, b5 was actually a stronger solution. Queen covers the vital d8 square and keeps an eye on the pawn on c3. For example, rook h2, you simply ruthlessly take the pawn on c3, and after queen h7 check, you don't worry. You slide over, and the counterattack is in full swing. The bishop is attacked, the pawn is attacked, queen e1 check is possible. Let's take a look. For example, bishop b2, queen e1 check. King up, queen check, king f2, queen c2 check, king f3, and then, then queen b3 check would allow black to scoop the bishop with check, and all the while his king is quite safe. Notice also that if king g1, queen b1 check achieves the same result. So let's go back after queen c3. Let's suppose white tries queen h7, king f8, and then e6 looking to generate and loosen up the, the king a bit. Well, the answer then would be, of course, take the bishop with check, why not? And then queen d2 check, and then on king h3, note that king f1, knight e3 check, king g1, and queen e1 is mate. Black gets there first. And so after king h3, 
Black has a very nice counter shot, knight f4 check. Pawn takes, rook check, and queen takes h2, mate. So instead of queen b5, b5. Queen covers d8, queen stays on c3. This would have been the way to fly. This would have maintained black's advantage. But after queen b5, white alertly plays rook b2. This stops any kind of queen b1 penetration. After queen d7, now the rook swings over. And at this point, white has pretty good compensation for his pawn. In the game, Ivanchuk plays h5. Very well-known defensive technique. The idea is that after pawn takes king up, you've given back the pawn, but white has 15 points of force lined up here that no longer can penetrate, and the pawn on h6 quite often can turn out to be the best defender of the black king. Instead of h5, other ideas were king f8, fleeing, known as the oldest defense to mankind, and rook a5, activating the rook. In both cases, just kissing off the h-pawn and looking to bring your king to e7. But h5 was good, and after g takes h6, king h7. And so the challenge really is for white how he's going to penetrate. Now, of course, notice knight takes c3 is not on right away because queen f6 to g7 mate. White plays rook f2. And at this point, it's pretty obvious he's planning to play g4 and try and blast open the f-file. Black plays b5, but again, rook b5. <clears throat> or rook a5 with the idea of rook b5 and then either rook b3 or rook b1. Activating this rook uh, makes a lot of sense. But after b5, g4 takes on g4. And now white comes up with an interesting idea. He brings his king up. And we see the idea here, after knight takes c3, he plays queen takes g4. And the point is to try and contest the queen as a defender. And the queen right now is holding up the f7 pawn. For example, if queen g4, king g4, we can see the f pawn is under attack. After king g8, bishop g5 is quite nice. And on knight e4 h7 check, king takes, rook check, king back, rook b7, rook a3, e6, and white has fantastic compensation. So after queen g4, Ivanchuk plays queen d5. However, this is really the first critical point in the game. The correct way to go was a fantastic resource, f5 sacrificing a second pawn. After e takes f6, the blockading queen f7. The idea here is that, for example, if queen c8, you can play knight e4 check, king g2, rook takes f6, and on rook takes, knight takes, black has a clearly winning queen plus knight versus queen plus bishop ending. His past c pawn going to be a monster, his control of the light squares, and his king is perfectly safe. After queen f7, white could try bishop g5 to hold on to his pawn, but then rook takes a3, king h2, and a5, and according to Fritz, and I have to say I quite, quite agree, uh, black is basically two solid pawns up and just marching up the queen side, and very hard for white to make any progress. For example, let's say d5, knight takes, rook over, trying to create some noise. You could probably just go in there and offer to trade. But you can see, black is able to use all the light squares to barricade in quite snugly. Instead, after queen g4, Ivanchuk played queen d5. After king h2, avoiding the knight e4 check, he now made the decisive error. He played knight to e4. Again, it was not too late to preserve the advantage with f5. But very hard to realize that you should sacrifice a pawn here. e takes f6. Again, the same blockading idea. Queen back to f7. And after bishop g5, rook takes a3. Black still has a 
pretty big advantage, very close to winning. He is one tempo behind the previous variation. But nonetheless, this still would have probably led to an ultimate victory for black. In the game, after king h2, Ivanchuk erred with knight to e4. And now the black knight loses its footing, so to speak, because after rook f4, where can he go? If he plays knight back to c3, then queen c8 is deadly. The threat on a6, and the threat of queen f8 to g7 mate. So after knight e4, rook f4, Ivanchuk tried to rescue the knight with f5. But after e takes f6, knight takes f6, and the queen is in the fox house here, threatening the rook, and Ivanchuk played rook c6, and while white was on move, resigned. What he overlooked was not queen b7 check, which looks quite strong, but after knight d7, black's still holding the fort. Instead, after rook c6, the more clever queen f8 threatens simply queen g8 checkmate and also threatens rook takes on f6. So at this point, after rook c6, with white on move, Ivanchuk resigned. So there you have it, close to a strategical masterpiece. Instead, with a 230 point rating differential, it winds up being one of the biggest upsets in the early stage of the Olympiad.